Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a fifth edition. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a 5th edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world. Casey, what happened last time? I am going to tell you so good what happened. Um, Ezri had feelings. He <laughs> left the party. Ari and Shade go after him. He pouted in a corner. And... <laughs> Casey's notes experience these episodes differently. <laughs> she, she, she takes notes in character. <laughs> this is what you get. I will. I. I am recapping the episode. Okay. No interruptions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Esri punched Dane. Um. Then. Yada, yada, yada. We go back home. Ezri talks to Thora. Thora says she recruited for Black Wheel. Ezri's cool with it. Shade is not. Also, Thora says, please don't send any other students into missions without my permission. Thank you. And then we hopefully go to bed. Um, and then Philip threw in a Tamil scene. And... There was a gray guy with red and orange dragon marks, and he was like, she was there. Timeline escalated. I yeah, can't believe that's right. Casey, Casey, I cannot believe you yada 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 over Ari's outstanding loot performance at the party. Pog I know, I'm so sorry. And Pog's dance. No. I mean, no. really, this is how we made friends is because the their social abilities. Ugh, so vain, Shade. Come on. That's not at all true. Shade is the only reason we have those friends because of like her shared <laughs> love of murder. So <laughs> family, you which mean. is truly oh, the irony of this campaign. <laughs> so, uh, all of you, bit by bit, make your way to your sleeping quarters uh, and can take a long rest. Huzzah! <laughs> oh, I need that so bad. We did it. <laughs> Woo. Officially survived. <laughs> you did. Meet. Uh, oh. Long rest. All your abilities back. Only uh, half your hit dice, though. Ugh. Only half your hit dice come back. That's true. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you said that. I totally forgot. Yep. <clears throat> so. I kind of imagine it's a lot of sleeping uh, that you all sleep hard uh, and long um, and probably well I don't know you tell me is it is it like a pass out all th all the way through the night and back around to morning or y'all waking up for a few hours around nine <laughs> um Ari up. would probably get up to to go like have eat food. Yeah, like, Pog's he didn't snacking eat a whole lot and like yeah, um, catch up with Arlo and Forge. How have things been? How are you? Great. Uh, things are awful, but we're making it. So um, Ari would actually ask Arlo about time travel. Like Ari's really confused and concerned about what happened. He's been trying to keep things cool just because he doesn't want Shade to feel bad about like her role in it. But yeah, Ari's really freaked out. So okay. Ari would go to Arlo, be like, "Hey." So late in the evening, you you all rouse yourselves a little bit um, to acquire d dinner leftovers, basically, uh, <clears throat> and. 
Uh, Arlo is sure. Arlo's in the dining area when you when you come in search of food. Hey, Arlo, how's it going? Ah, sorry. Well enough. I heard you all had another rousing adventure. Uh, that's that's a word for it. Um, yeah, adventures always seem a lot better reading about them than actually doing them. Uh, just I'm I'm learning. Uh, but uh, uh, class is going well. They are going. It's a pro- it's a work in progress. Fair enough. Uh, this this group of students are an interesting group to to keep focused. Uh, yeah. Um, I had a question, given your scope of knowledge and your your studies and specialties. Um, do you know anything about um, manipulation of time, as it were? Or have, have read anything about the subject? And I, well, hold on, let me clarify. I'm not talking about manipulation of time like we experienced where we went to the Feywild and like time passed differently but like well on our rousing adventure uh we we hit an instance where we were out of the fight but Ezri was dead and then time got rewound to where Ezri wasn't dead and we were able to redo like the last minute of the fight uh and incidentally I made it through that whole fight with getting knocked out until we round the clock and then second time around I got knocked out which is annoying but uh that's either here or there uh, so have you read anything about that specifically? Hmm. I, it is theoretically possible by arcane means to, well, in layman's terms, to stop time. Many theorize that what is actually occurring is that the arcane user is actually simply moving very, very fast. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that it seems that time has stopped, but hasn't actually, but it's unclear. Um, but only a very... It would require an immense amount of arcane ability to do even that. I have never heard of a... of a wizard or cleric or any any mortal spell caster being able to turn time back. How you say time got wound back? How did that happen? Oh, how much does Ari trust Arlo? And how <laughs> mad is Shade gonna be? That, that's the calculus that Ari's doing in his head right now. Um, Ari just kind of lowers his voice a little bit to indicate that this is a sensitive subject. There may have been a Sphinx involved in the, the Sphinx was the one that did it. Huh. Well, uh, advent- very few adventurers have encountered the Sphinx and come away. Um, those that have, though, have sometimes reported things not unlike what you suggest uh, within within its lair and that of course raises an entirely different question of what constitutes a lair and how does a sphinx determine the circumference of its of its lair uh, within its lair a sphinx does based on reports that I have read have substantial control over the flow of time and events. Why this is, is not at all clear. Uh, I know several scholars have attempted to interview Professor Flamewind of the Morgrave University on the subject, uh, but her answers on the matter are inscrutable. Yeah, that tracks with uh, the Sphinx that I've spoken to as well. Um, this theorizing and 
uh, people talking about the, this in, a, in theoretical terms. What are potential uh, ramifications of this type of magic? Even people's best guesses. Because well, the Sphinx I've... had mentioned that it was potentially dangerous. And so I'm just trying to get ahead on what that may be. Well, there is a lot of... There are a lot of... Um contradictions involved uh, for example we experienced nothing unusual yeah so because we we remembered the time jump so time rewound locally which is but then, but then how right wait, yes what? correct Why? that is the problem nah. yes um any such cosmic contradiction would seem that it could go terribly wrong. Um, I, I have heard of a sphinx being able to forcibly alter the age of someone by even more locally speeding or reversing time. Uh, Yikes. Adventurers who have encountered sphinxes and displeased them have sometimes found themselves 10, 20 years older when they come out of the the lair uh, or taken backwards to helpless toddlers. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, again, the, the strange and inscrutable thing is that these powers seem only to function within the Sphinx's lair as if the Sphinx somehow warps time around itself. Um, but so this in this particular instance, the we we went to the Sphinx in Shay Tiras to Lie. And then the we returned Tiras to Lie. That is unexpected. Arlo, I cannot uh, <laughs> make it more clear to you how much this conversation should not leave this table that I told you that and what we're discussing, please, and thank you. Um, I, But then we, we returned to where we were previously with the Sphinx, and then the Sphinx rewound time. So we left where she resides, and you then left this happened. her lair. Well, she, correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, like a structure came with us mm -hmm. and it began to spin. Right. Okay. And she may have the, brought her layer. The lights on us. it began to spin. It didn't. The lights began to spin. Yeah. Um, she may have brought the structure, the layer with her, which, but that, that, that seems like a real loophole on what a layer means if a layer is mobile. Uh, yes, it does. That would be, uh, again, what many creatures are able to affect the space in which they reside um, the precise phenomenon is not exactly explicable um, how far back do you think in your professional opinion theoretically a sphinx could go I don't know I've never heard of someone who was taken back by a sphinx in this, this was, way. This was minutes, but it probably doesn't matter. Um, I'm certain it does. I just don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying resolve. that this line of thinking doesn't matter in the, the actionable world that I exist in. Anyway, uh, thank, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, this chat once again, uh, please, uh, you, you and me, this, this, that's, that's where this conversation resides. Um, very well. So I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, hog after scrounging up some food, uh, and a, a nice bowl of leftovers is going to find forge and talk to him about what he would need to inscribe strike force on the dining room table. Jesus Christ. 
It's not. You can tell me what materials not just are our needed. Table. I will make that happen. Yet. It's not our table yet. Paul, it's not just our table. I heard you were back. Yes, we are. We are, as you can you can see now. Yes, I am confirming we are in fact back. How was staying here? It was good. Good. Nothing of great note happened. You don't know how good that is to hear. That's That actually makes me <laughs> feel good to know. Uh, I hate when things happen and I'm not there for them. Um, <clears throat> so on our big table, the strike force was talking and we would like to... Do you mean the main dining table or the dining table in your apartments on the second floor? Oh, that would probably be a good place to get to. You know what? I I want to say the main one, but maybe for practice we start with the with the apartments dining room table. So what I'm thinking Very well. is we'd really like cuz you know we're called the strike force, obviously. Um I have heard the children say that. Right. And now one of the grown-ups too. <laughs> yes. It's totally our name. Everyone just so you know Everybody calls us that. Um, we are thinking that we would like to have on the table. We would, <laughs> we would like for it to say "Strike Force" on on the table, like carved into it, but fancier than just like you know carving with my knife. Could you help with that? Yes, I certainly could. Uh, do, what, that's awesome. Would you mind? Well, I mean, not only can you, but like, would it, would it be cool? Would would that be something you would want to do? I don't want to tell you. Like, I'm not telling. Would you want to? I would be happy to help with this. Awesome, that's great. That's great. Can you? This is that. Uh, if if we're like happy together, we do like this. I see. You are so much stronger than I remember. <laughs> what, do you, uh, what do you need from me for us to, to be able to do this? I do not require any special materials to engrave wood. That's even cooler. This. Um, do, you, do you have a particular style in mind other than fancy? That was really as far as I had thought. I didn't know you were going to be this good at doing something that I just thought we came up with. No, I really haven't. We should check with Shade. The letters. She'll probably have a good idea for it. Very well. Where is Shade? Where Where are we, Philip? Where did I find Forge? Uh, you probably found Forge in, um, let's say you found Forge, uh, coming, coming up from the basement. So they, uh, you probably would have encountered them, um, in the library so inside, uh, or maybe in the lobby. Okay. Yeah. Um, then let's uh let, let's see if i can find her and i'm gonna walk to the nearest exit and try to look up on the balconies and see if i can shade shade because i don't want to wake her if she's like completely out and needs the sleep but like if she's ready to be roused I... at the nine o'clock mark shade sent cal in to peek in on esri hmm. he said that he was sleeping, so Cal is just gonna peek in on him, make sure he's breathing. The <laughs> Cal walks over, puts one <laughs> paw on on Ezri's face, just checking to see if he uh, fonts his nails. <laughs> Let's see. Are you are you observing through Cal in any measurable way, or is this just Cal's? Cal is left to his own. This is just Cal. Okay. Is... Yes, he's breathing. He's asleep. 
is sleep. Right. Right. It's spooky sleep. I forget about that. Um. So Shade Shade is awake. She just has not left her left her balcony. Shade. So then you hear Paul. Shade. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you were gonna hear me whisper so loud. Hey, um, we are we're gonna work on the table to make to make the fancy strike force table. Um, did you? Yeah, you're that not was really... such a good idea that Ari had. Yeah, I'm. I'm super excited that he's on board with the strike force name now. Um, Forge can do it, and he said we don't even need to do anything special. But I said fancy, and they are yeah. way more capable than I expected. And they know a bunch of different kinds of fancy. Do you? What else should we tell them to do for this? We we should do we should do the fancy with the like super super straight edges and not the fancy with the pretty swirls because the fancy with the pretty swirls is really lovely but it it feels more like like river and vine but strike force we want to be like we punch you yeah right like striking yeah. with force oh our name just got even better. <laughs> You should explain that to him. I think he would get it. Yeah. Our name just got even better. <laughs> Fancy like that, Forge. Like a like a punch. Fancy and hard edged. Like a punch. Like mm. like the like letters straight. are are like blocks. And like sharp. Oh. Sharp blocks. Very well. Oh, because like a punch is like a strike, but also I kind of, I do a lot of lightning and lightning strikes too. Shade, this is better and better the longer we talk. Imagine how much better it's going to be after we did it. It's going to be so cool. Sharp letters like lightning. Oh, yes. That's even better than the blocks. Forge, that's such a good idea. You are great at this. Very well. Would you like me to do this? Please. Please. Yes, please. So, Shade, here's what I think, and you think better thinks than I think sometimes, I think. So, we're going to do the upstairs table first to make sure that it looks as good as, as our mind pictures are. And then we can do the big one. I think that's a really good idea because then okay. we'll have it on both. But if there's something that we we think of later, we can add it to the to the big one. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yes, we are ready, Forge. Uh, Forge goes back through the house and up, with him. Yep. the up the stairs. Uh, into the common area outside of y'all's bedrooms. Uh, and they examine the table for a moment uh, and then um, hold up one of their hands and, and their index finger uh, gradually begins to glow. Uh, and there's this sort of humming noise. And then uh, Forge leans over and just begins with their finger to carve into the table these really sharp lightning letters or just the coolest or just rad uh, <clears throat> spelling out strike force how do you prefer strike spelled <laughs> why would he uh, ask that why would he ask that? why in common, <laughs> in common <laughs> there's their alternate it's different no, if you're not it's no, different if you're not. in breland versus in carnath so, there's there's more than one way to spell it yes in southern corvair it is traditionally spelled with an i however in northern corvair it is often spelled with a y you're a liar <laughs> Jade, this is, I feel like we're making really good decisions for everybody right now. So 
we can just decide this because we're doing good. Do you like the Y one? It's different, I, I think. And it looks like it looks like a strike, right? Yeah, it, like, exactly. And it'll look really good in lightning. <laughs> That's yes. we're gonna go with with the, the Y y-piece strike. Please, Forge. We're doing so good, Shade. Very well. Yeah. They're gonna be so happy. Uh, Ari, from down from downstairs, you hear this sort of. <laughs> It's just a Dremel <laughs> noise. <laughs> I'll see and see. I'll, I'll be going. back. Ari gets up. <laughs> what? What's you, you hey, just, you just see Forge on? leaning over, and there's a sort of occasional sparking, and there's a little bit of smoke drifting up from their finger. Oh, what is happening they here? Too early. The Are you amazing, Ari. We did your idea. You're here before it's done, but <laughs> but. My idea? What was my strike idea? Strike force on the table. The strike force table. Oh my god. Uh, both Eric and Ari just shot where the misunderstanding originated. Um, uh, I meant... Oh, uh, well, I guess... Yep. You hunted <sighs> to table Why? the strike force name. Strike table, force. The strike force. We did, it's yep. Now that that is and what it I is said. what we did, Ari. It this looks is, so oh. good. This is all my doing. Yep. And Ari just gives a quick little. Um, why is it spelled like that? <laughs> that's because in Northern it's, Corvair, that's how it's spelled. <laughs> and. It looks cool. I traveled like all over Corvair for my whole life, and I've. Uh, Did well, you read the word strike um, everywhere that you traveled, Ari? Because Forge is the one that gave us this awesome idea. They're super helpful with creating things. Yeah. Super useful yeah, things are. like a strike and, force table. And doesn't the wife Forge like is a now. Strike? Forge is now working their way along the edge of the table, just doing a, a chain lightning <laughs> motif. Love this so the much. Edges. That's yeah, such that's a good wicked, idea. Wicked cool. Uh, great job, everyone. Oh, thank I'm you. Glad that if you wish, melt some metal into the lightning bolts. What? Yeah, yes, please. I mean, in for a penny. Sure, why not? In for a copper, sorry. <laughs> Pennies are made of copper. Not to get a, not to get anachronistic on this very, very in-universe scene. <laughs> Listen, man, pennies date back to the like eighth century. <laughs> it's not a new invention. Uh, so it, it takes Forge about um, about you know fifteen minutes to do the table awesome. carving. Uh, and they then go downstairs to acquire some some metal wiring to uh, if they fill in the the carvings around the edges with uh, with uh, metal awesome. lightning bolts. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Shade is just watching um, this in awe. It's the coolest thing ever. And it absolutely looks like I mean it looks like the title uh, of a metal album. Hearing the sound, if it was enough for Ari to hear, uh, Pip is going to be looking up the stairwell trying to to mm-hmm. see. In half pull up position with his feet dangling. <laughs> um, well, Ari's got a negative one perception, so he would have no idea that Pip was doing that. Um, <laughs> Shade, real quick, while while Forge is getting the metal and stuff, I talked to Arlo about the whole time travel business, the jumping back in time, um, because you know he knows about planar stuff, and I thought that he would be the best person to like have some insight on all of that and the weird thing they didn't you know how when we jumped back we remembered jumping back that didn't happen here like they didn't experience and so I don't know how that so like time wasn't affected here but we went back right like minute but then somehow we caught back up the Sphinx did with it. With the rest of the world. But but the Sphinx left after we jumped back. Is what I, like the Sphinx stopped 
Karasi stopped doing anything after she sent us back. But not everybody went back. They kept on going. So theoretically, we should have been behind everybody else. But we weren't when we got back. No. Does that make well, sense? Well, because we just redid it. <laughs> <laughs> but not everyone else did. Well, right. Because so the like, Sphinx wasn't if... everywhere. She was just the one place. Exactly. So, so if you and I were walking side by side, and then I all of a sudden took five steps backwards and you kept walking, we would be at different points, right? Right. But well, she would probably be standing still wondering why you stopped it. five feet back. I might do that, yeah. <laughs> okay, clearly I, I'm worrying about nothing then. So I will just... What if... Um, do, yeah. Do you no, never mind? Are you saying that the Sphinx put us at the same time in a different time? I don't know about that. I don't. I don't know if there's like no. I don't think we need to get to like multiversal theory. That seems <laughs> way too far afield. Uh, I just I I was confused that you know we went back, the rest of the world didn't, but somehow we stayed with the rest of the world even after Herazi had. Well, now so are we. So, um, confused. We, so are when we, we weren't. I was just confused and concerned because uh, there's a lot of stories about time travel out there, and it never goes well. Uh, so I just was kind of. I worried, don't know a but, single uh, one. I didn't know one. of those. You hear a lot of stories when you travel, around, especially in Northern Corvair, where apparently they use Well, I can't trust your stories if you didn't um, even pay attention to how they spell but... words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, you know, I it's probably just me worrying over nothing. Um, if so it they're, is they're something bad, is it stories something we yeah. could do anything about? Um, I mean, the, the biggest can like, at least in the stories that I read, it's typically when you change, like change something that was supposed to happen that then there's like unintended consequences and like, uh, you know, uh, the idea but, like, yeah, ripples. And, but and, what do you like, mean by sorry, what was supposed to happen? Like Ezri wasn't supposed to die. And so we made it to the thing that was supposed to happen. <laughs> where he lived yeah i i know and i didn't i don't i don't want Ezri to have died obviously i was all on board with going back and, and saving him um but i'm just i'm a I, I, i'm a worrier i was worried um i clearly uh Ezri seems fine everybody seems fine there doesn't need to be anything to worry I about i think we I should that. worry about harazi though because she said it would be very dangerous for her and then, and then she went ahead and did That's it. That's what anyways. kind of fueled my. Um, well, she said it would be dangerous for everyone. Is it was her exact wording when right before she did it? Is we said, "Who is it dangerous for?" And she said, "Potentially everyone." So that's kind of where my anxiety is coming from in in my worry about all of this. Is she? But she we seem to be, be fine, and we don't know about her yet. Cal, not now. <laughs> Can I ask? He's testing how asleep <laughs> Ezri is. Ezri is. <laughs> Can I um, can I ask for for one uh, strike force another rule like we had when we were we were talking and walking earlier uh, the same way that I don't think Ezri should walk off and search for bad guy heads in war zones without us could you guys tell me next time uh, before you go to a different place and then back in time and change the world because I didn't know <laughs> I, I mean, any of it that was a very like we were in the middle of the fight at that point like Ezri had died and like, then you I, I think weren't a, but I'm not disagreeing and I was we, we could have communicated better but I do think there is a distinction between Ezri contemplating it like he was at the party I sat down next to him and tried to talk to him and uh, he was at the party and made the choice to leave without us. Shade, in the moment, had to make a call because Ezri was dead. 
on what to do. And so I think there is a, oh, a little bit yeah. of leeway to be given. I'm to not somebody mad that it happened. Decision, I'm just saying, could we like not again? Or if you do, just be like, hey, good friend Pog, we're all going to leave. That's all. But we, I next time, yeah, I didn't actually know what was going to happen. Um, and so it, it, I, I didn't think to tell you I'm, I might do this one thing and I don't know what's going to happen and, and we might go away, but we might also not. Um, because I, I wasn't thinking that's, I just, I was just sad. And so I was just feeling, Oh, I'm not um, mad. I'm just worried because it was really scary when it happened. And if it happens again, you don't have to say all those words. Maybe just be like, Pog, that thing, you know, so that I, I know. Hold on to your butt. Go anywhere. Yeah. My butt stayed. Yeah, I didn't hold on to butts. Yeah. I, I held on to shoulders. I guess my hand was kind of on Esri's butt while I was holding him, so, but I don't know. If I would say no. Um, but the table looks great. It's just, it's a, it's, it, it's a fun line from a story oh. that I read about dinosaurs and Zendrick. It's not the big thing. Some guy tried to make a park and it went bad. We um, we should go visit Harazi though at some point and see if she's okay. And also tell her thank you. Okay. For for saving our butts. That's true. Okay, well, uh sorry that I brought up the whole uh thing. It's probably fine and uh no need to Well, and you it. could ask her all of your your step weird yeah, questions. Yeah, they might make sense to her. She would... Yeah. yeah. She she would know uh, better. Maybe. She's done this before. Surely. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, well, because uh, I wasn't from the time I that I was from... I didn't go to the so time that I was in. in. Do you... This is nonsense. I don't understand yeah. any of it. I don't get it. I'm just <laughs> having fun. Yeah. Okay. Good. The table uh, is awesome. It does. Yeah. Forge, the table looks great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super happy that we are totally committed to this name. Even, it, even Forge knew us um, by Strike Force. I'm so glad. Awesome. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, all right. Well, I am like wide awake wide and it awake. is super late. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but. <laughs> so is Ezri, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from Ezri's room. <laughs> That's just, you know how he talks when he's in his sleep. It's just, it's just nonsense. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to go out, so I'll be back later. Not like sad out, fun out, right? Oh, good clarifying question. No, like not sad. I mean, I because of our conversation at Woodshade, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you while I have a lot of anxiety and like concern about how things went and, you know. Uh, my head hurts from the burns and everything. And this sounds so, like a sad out. I'm gonna go like relax. It's not sad. It's just uh, there's a lot in my mind. I just want to go kind of relax and uh, listen to some music, have a couple drinks, take my mind off things. Does that make sense? Like I'm not going to like sit and stew in my sadness. I'm trying to like alleviate. Like the something. party when we went to the party and we had a good time. Yeah, like the party. I don't think I could do another party tonight yeah. though. That's that that's. No. That's my go out mode. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not partying. I'm going to sit and listen to music and have a couple drinks. So, because I've already slept eight hours. Do you think Solark is awake? Um, we could totally find out. Maybe. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, oh, you're yeah. going out. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, I'll go say hi. 
Is this one of those times that you want to go say hi by yourself? No. Or no. could I go say No, you hi wanted to go. You. Is it okay if so I go right with her. you? That's it's your it's your go say hi. I don't No, no, no. I was just going to go with you if that was okay to go say hi. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to all right, so do you all want to go yes. say hi to Salarka and see if she wants to go get drink? So okay, so this is. Am I included oh, in you this can't. plan? I was going like, to ask her if she could make something special for the Sphinx, but we could also ask her if she wants to go out to have yeah, drinks and I, sit quietly and think. I thought you had some things to drink about, so I didn't know well, if we were we going with talk. you. Like, no, like, like we could talk and hang out, like socially. Like we don't have to. We could spend time together where we're not like unpacking our feelings and having these really big momentous conversations. We I just still like, don't have any huh. idea what's going on, but I hear we're gonna go see Salarka. Yeah. And tell her about the table. Yes. And say hi. And get a gift. Okay. And maybe drink yes. with Hardy. Cool. <laughs> glad glad to be included on my own plan. Uh <laughs> should we we should wake Ezri up. Or we should make his eyes roll the right way, at least, and see if he wants to go with us. He we should see if he wants to go I with mean, us. He, he, yeah. Cal is really good at gently waking people up. I so, would Cal. love that idea, <laughs> so I don't have to see Ezri asleep. Yeah. Wake Ezri up, please. And Ezri, uh, a leopard... <laughs> Just starts batting the side of your face with with their paw. Just boom, 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 boom. boom. Is is Cal considered boom, boom, a beast? Boom, 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 boom. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, yes. Yeah, someone's not happy with whatever you're planning. <laughs> yes, uh, Cal is considered a beast. Okay, hold on one sec. I have so many freaking spells now. <laughs> Um, Poor you. <laughs> Waking Ezri was already a mistake, and nothing has actually happened yet. <laughs> just, I just wanted to see if the dude wanted to grab a half and half with us, and here we go. I'm gonna cast Dominate Beast. I was just trying to get Ari out of the house for a bit. <laughs> uh, Casey, would you make a Wisdom saving throw on Cal's behalf? I will happily make a Wisdom saving throw on his behalf. Fourteen. Fails. Ooh. All right. You seize mental Man. control of Cal. Oh, Shade, I misunderstood. I you thought sent you something failed. wrong. Hmm. I had the wrong reaction to that. <laughs> I was like, boy, she's super chill about this. <laughs> Watch party gonna be mad. In two episodes, for those keeping count, Esri has punched Dane and has now <laughs> seized control of Cal's mind. I, I tell Cal to... Uh... Can I say that Ari has hats? Does Ari have hats? Probably. There's probably yeah. hats from the from yeah, the Orlando Grim uh, yeah, collection. To go steal one of Ari's yeah. hats and put it on and go back to shade. <laughs> okay, so Philip, you see, Philip, you uh, you were going to say that Shade sent something when Art when Ezri sees control. Yes, Shade sent something wrong. Okay. okay. Uh, there's a um, so Cal bounces off of Esri's bed. Uh, Gets to the door of Esri's room. Shade is doesn't know how to work a running lock. Running after Cal. Um, bats, 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 real hard at the door of Esri's room. Wait, how? Uh, from the inside. Okay. I would assume Cal came uh, in through the window. Right. But the direct way to Ari's room would be out the door because Ari's room is right across the hall from yours. I mean, hearing noise on the inside of Esri's door, Shade I assume is we would running all go Cal. She senses something like, wrong with him. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you open the door. Cal comes just bolting out of Esri's room, across the hall, uh, into Ari's room. Um, 
And he hey, just passes what? me? Shade, what's what's Cal doing? Mm-hmm. What'd you uh, do? And comes back out with uh one of Ari's uh with with a with a fedora in his mouth. Oh, don't do that. To- no, no. I, listen, I'm, no. you have whatever Orlando Grimalkin has. I'm not saying Ari wears one. I'm saying Ari is in possession of a, like, yeah, that's canvas fedora. <laughs> it's, it's like halfway between a fedora and, like, an Outback hat. Cal, what, okay. what are you doing Ma'ari. with that? Cal seems confused. Because the next instruction is difficult without thumbs. <laughs> Ezri, Cal? what did you do? What? Is there something? He wants to wear the hat. He does not want to wear the hat. Why does he now want to wear a hat? Because I told him so. <laughs> Make it stop. Put the hat on him. Will that stop it? It probably runs out now. It's only a minute. Yeah. After after a minute, Cal subsides, blinks, <laughs> drops the hat. Cal, I am sorry. And you don't ever have to wake him up again. <laughs> Do you still want him to come, Shade? Was this, or, okay. I mean, y'all can invite him. That was not very kind. We, I was going to see if he wanted to go out with us. And you just... Close the door, please. Pog goes and closes the door. I am so sorry. Do not I suggested the that. He's in a good place. That is not, it's not or on you, you Cal. Pog, how I thought that. I'm sorry. I look straight at Cal. I did not mean to suggest something that would make him be in your brain. Cal does one of those shakes that slowly runs its way down from his from his head down his back. Um, and because ends with his tail. Paul cares him. about it so much, he's going to hold his hand right. down to see to if Cal will order. give him just a little forgiveness nuzzle. I did not mean for that to happen. Whenever Cal notices your your hand, he just sort of bats your hand with okay. his nose a little bit, and then Ari turns Ari turns to go down the stairs. Pip, what? I, go to bed. I that was an hour ago. I'm in bed. I'm in bed. <laughs> uh, what? What? What are you talking about? Running down. <laughs> All right. Do our doors lock? Our door right. doors? Uh, surely. Uh, well, probably. Just reasonably speaking. Mo has locked the door behind Pip. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, I'm going to get in trouble. You have to let me in. Oh, open, 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 open. What? Oh. <laughs> I can't hear you. I mean, Oofs back in, but he lands in, on your bunk. <laughs> Why did you lock the door behind me? Rainbow! <laughs> awesome. Because it that was funny. I don't think so. Oh my god, you two We're, go to sleep. Why You're did you so wake loud. us up? We're totally sleeping, Mr. Ari! Mr. Ari! Get off my bed! Hit. Shut up. <laughs> Just a nice, Such smooth, episodes. on the rails episode here for you, Philip. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Existential doom. Existential doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Ezri rejects your invitation. And the yes, three of he you does. Head out for drinks. Salarka first. Don't pick up Salarka along the way. Okay. Uh, it's pretty late. Um, 
So uh, the the forge is closed before you arrive. Um, I have to and, imagine Pog no has one, walked no her home. No one is there. Oh yes, you know where she lives. That's yeah. that's going to be where where okay. I lead us. I mean, it's nine o'clock. Oh, that's uh, so after ten. Ari asks. <laughs> yeah, Ari asks as we approach the residence. Do you want me to ask since no, Laura likes you. me, or do you want to handle this? Okay. Um, the, 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 the Hular residence, uh, is like many things in the city, an old giant building. Uh, but through, you know, it, it's that kind of ruin where the stonework is still intact, but the, whatever wood interior there was has long since rotted or burned away, uh, and has been replaced. And so what this is, is it's essentially a an old giant palace that's been sectioned off into a whole lot of largish residences. Uh, and one of these belongs to Hular and his family. Um, so Pog, do you go to the front door or do you have some way of getting Salarka's attention? Uh, do you, you and Salarka have some method worked out of, uh, you know, I'm going to say we do, but, uh, Mm -hmm. because I've got the, I assume Cal is there as well, so since the trio is along, I'm not going to reveal to them how I get Solarka's attention. We'll go ahead and let the family know Fair that we're, we're asking her to come out with us. Alright. Uh, yeah, so you knock. Uh, it, there's a, a moment um, before the door opens and the figure of Hular fills the door frame. I'm, what are you doing here this late? Good night time, Mr. Hular. Um, good to see you. Uh, my friends and I are going out for a bit, and we hadn't seen Solarka in a couple days and had some things we were going to talk to her about and see if she wanted to come out as well. Mm. Hello, Mr. Hular. Ari, Jade. It's very late. Yeah, it's a little late. It's a little very late. Mm. It's late for starting evening. We we started our evening at like. Father, is that Pog? Um, it's very late. Cal, 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 it's okay. Uh, and there's a, a slight shuffle, and, and Solarka sort of edges her way around him. It's not late. I'm going out. <laughs> Be back soon, uh, says Bye, Hular. Hular, as Solarka just pushes her way out the door and over. Hi, Mr. Hular. Uh, and uh, just pulls Hog, Pog into a big embrace. You came back. Pog accepts and returns. I did. We we all did. We we did it. We have so much to tell you she, about. Uh, let's go of Pog and, and turns and just um, engulfs Shade. I mean, Solarka's two or three feet taller than Shade, so <laughs> there's, there's a, a lot, lot more Solarka. Uh, so Solarka just engulfs Shade in a hug. Um, uh, and then, um, uh, turns to, turns to Arya and a, a more, a more friendly hug. Like it's a little less, less, uh, big because I don't just don't imagine Arya and Solarka on a excited hug, uh, r relationship. Level. Yeah. But she gives you a, just a, a friendly We're not hug. there. That's fine. Um, nice to see you, Solarka. I was worried. You were... Your sword was awesome. It did so good. Yeah, it did well. Yes, um, it like yeah. cut through a shambling mound. We were gonna, we were gonna go. We have, yeah. We fought oh, everything. It was crazy. Do, do you want to go? There's like a couple taverns nearby. We were just gonna go get some drinks and hang of out. Of could Tell you over over drinks. Yes, I would love to hear this. Uh, 
So she, yeah, she uh, she goes with you. Um, on the walk over, mm-hmm. just as I imagine that on the initial outset of coming together, Pog is going to uh, prioritize time with Salarka and kind of relaying his version of events on the walk. <laughs> um, and so uh, Ari turns to Shade while they're occupied and uh, kind of says, by the way, I don't, with everything that was happening in the aftermath, um, I, I don't think I, I properly, um, you did really well. Like, you're the only reason Dane got out of there. And you're the only reason I think a lot of us got out of there. So I just wanted to say great job and thank you for being you. Well, thank you. I Yeah. I think we helped somebody and it and it turned out okay this time. Yeah. Yeah. I I think so. But yeah, I just think I we were all so concerned about everything that was going on. I think that your uh your your heroics kind of got buried a little bit and I just wanted to let you know that I noticed and you were really great. Well, thank you. That means a lot. And Esri was like, what if we feed the crocodile? And he was just, he went back for meat instead. Like, what? <laughs> um, yeah. You, uh, you find a bar. Uh, someone want to tell me what bar you, you go to? Crooked Stool. Nice. <laughs> That's good. That's a, it's a good name for a bar I don't want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're guaranteed consequences from this bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, the Crooked Stool. Uh, you find seats, drinks are brought, uh, there's music playing, um, and uh, uh, bar food brought out as well. Um, Solarka listens in just rapt attention as you recount uh, the <clears throat> the adventure in Blackbriar. What, is, what level of detail does Solarka get of the story? When we hit the uh, the end of the fight, Ari definitely um, cedes the floor to Shade. Like, Ari, Ari allows Shade to take over the telling of that section of the fight, so. Uh, Shade gives uh, pretty detailed account of okay. that section. Um, okay. She is with the intent of she wants to brainstorm with Salarka an appropriate gift to give this Sphinx. Nice. <laughs> um, does Solarka receive the proper names of the various high-ranking dragon-marked house officials that are now dead? Particularly Falco and Tyrus. <laughs> you did. You killed Falco. Yeah. What, what a day. Well, Ari didn't. Ari was Ari was Super asleep dead. while that was happening. Shade so, would. Um, Shade probably would have said Falco's name unless it was obvious that we were avoiding it. That's that's. Yeah, that's definitely the name that she would have. Then Falco showed up. Yeah, because I'm going to assume that. That we've so told Falco, but... her about the alleyway incident, or at least from Pog's side, because things changed for Pog after that. Okay. Um, and Pog... <laughs> things changed for a lot of them. So, uh, <laughs> noting the way in which you say the name, Solarka, um, Falco, he was he was in the uh, the alleyway fire. Why do you hate this person so much? 
he... Pog, has Salarka heard about how we became friends and, like, Pog ran has away stopped from hiding his mark, uh on the daily, so I would imagine... I'm gonna say the first person outside of the manner that he told would be Salarka. That's... Yeah. So, unless... I imagine... Uh, well, I'm not gonna speak for any other character. Salarka knows Pog's side, and Pog has said that that's where we became friends... Your personal details and what you've shared about how you were in that has not been given. Pog's an open book. Um, Ari would just say he was involved in uh, our past and where we came from before we came to Stormreach in a not positive light. I see. Um, yeah. So. Well, yep. It is a lot. Yup. Yeah, it's it's really hard to conceive a 24-hour period until you just lay it all out like that, and it just feels like it took months to get through. Well, at uh, least weeks. But... Yeah. Uh, I don't even have a nemesis. <laughs> Pop puts his... Well... Pug we puts have his one hand on Salarka now, and nice. on her hand and says, "Not yet." Reassuringly, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Ro is Ro is Talon that you gave to Shade. Like it not only took out the Shambling Mound, but also Dane was like restricted by vines, and it just like like it was nothing. Like didn't even take a full like action like it like took less than six seconds to accomplish <laughs> if you like, were like to a measure three it second, just time. Wow. you are talking very <laughs> strange right now you should not travel back in time for a little while Ari. he he's very obsessed with time right now it's, it's, it's a little odd so i but we've been I, through a lot i feel like it's odd that you're not concerned about the fact that we that we can we get another can we get another, no, uh, can we get another round this is what ari was Upset drinking about, about it i know i i don't i don't drink like that anymore i just i i'm concerned i'm worried like i'm anxious and so because of the ominous thing that Harazzi uh, that the Sphinx said right before. Yeah, we, we might have put her in danger, but she, also she saved our lives. And so we would love to, to, I would, I don't know about the rest of the group, I would love to get her something I'm, I'm very special as a thank you, and then we can go give it to her. And also, and also maybe Ari can talk to her about his time questions. Do you have any ideas of what you get a sphinx when they turn back time and save your friend's life? Um, pocket claw pocket. sharpener. <laughs> that is, um, that is funny. Uh, I don't know. Um, I could make something ornamental to wear around her neck um, if you have some idea of the size of it's her so neck big. So. yeah it's about this big okay it's about like Pog's chest I think Just... um, I, I could do that I don't I don't know what sphinxes like to wear. I, we've, I've only been around her the two times, and the last one was very fa fast. Or long, because it was um, back in time. But I could... I, I mean, technically I could it do never that. happened, because we went back um, and didn't go visit her. She has a neck, so is she good yep. wearing? Um, some jewelry. She yeah. she could definitely wear jewelry. Yeah, that sounds that sounds nice. Okay. What? Okay. What? No. Because of the concern. What if we? What if we got 
one of the pog, if you're willing to sacrifice one of them, if you still have any of the dragon shards that you took, what if we got like somebody to do like a protection enchantment or something on one of those dragon shards and put it in a piece of jewelry so it's both protective and ornamental? Protectamental. Oh, that's such a good idea. A protectamental. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's a word. Well, no, it's not. But that that's a that's a thing. Um, yeah. Well, because we're worried so we that, could do that we put her that in way danger. It's... Yeah, that's such a good idea. I don't I don't have any. I gave all of mine to Solarka to make me this really super awesome Rawa's talent talent. I still um, have some. I would guess I still have like probably two thirds have... of what I had. If I had to guess, I rough estimate. <laughs> Yeah, you would know. I mean, Solarka would know because I brought them all to her and she took what she needed. So I, if there's any that are left that will work. They're just money and magic. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me think about this and what materials okay. I would need. But yes, I could create a... Um, necklace that would be protective in some way. That would be awesome. You will also like to know we have someone else on our team that makes things and gonna start telling her very proudly about our new table. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, And so the night winds on with drinks and friendship and good cheer. Meanwhile. As we... (laughs) existentially showing, <laughs> showing off the tattoos that we mm-hmm. all got like to, to solidify our friendship on this trip yeah <laughs> as he lies lies in his bed dreaming or sort of distinctly not and dreaming. uh oh. distinctly not yeah um i guess that's where we'll pick up next time <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Kyber Shards. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find links to all of our social media, to our merch store, and to our Discord in the description down below, where you will also find a link to Colin's Twitch, where he is sorry, BTR. The O is a zero. New episodes of Kyber Shards drop every Monday. New Kyber Shards answers on Friday. You can submit questions for Kyber Shards answers on our Discord or in comments below. And until next time... Thanks for rolling with us.